how could I ask Mark? Our scuba diving Q&A, where I do my best to answer your scuba diving questions. Uh, if you have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comments section underneath this video on YouTube. And if you use the Ask Mark hashtag, it gets yourself and your question featured in an upcoming show. Uh, but I do my best to actually reply um, in the comments section so you do get your answer as soon as possible. Uh, today I'm answering a question from uh, Ludwig. I'm gonna say, I, I apologize if I said that wrong, um, about swapping back plates with the same webbing. So they ask, I'm going on a liverboard in Egypt in March, and since I also want to see and do other things than diving, I'm going backpacking the week before or maybe after. To save weight, I want to switch my 5mm steel backplate for a 3mm aluminium backplate. That means I have to take my whole wing apart, and since I bought my wing second hand, I never took it apart completely, just small bits at a time. I'm worried that I'll put it back together the wrong way. Anything I need to think about when when putting together a wing uh, is a tech line, by the way. Two inch webbing is quite forgiving um, for re-threading uh, on a new backplate or fitting new hardware and swapping things out because it does have some memory. Uh, one trick to save you from getting lost that I find is to mark certain points like where D-rings go or where it attaches at the waist with chalk chalk just so that when you get back in the water it just washes off and that allows you to know which is the top and the bottom of the webbing and where certain things go otherwise it's all about taking your time because the last thing that you want to do is to thread all of your left hand side and then attach that buckle only to realize that you've forgotten to thread a D-ring or something uh, or a D-ring's on backwards so take your time um, take a picture beforehand of both sides and yeah it it really is just a, a methodical thing um, you might get it backwards once or twice but that's not the end of the world it's it's all a, a learning experience another thing is webbing is pretty cheap two inch webbing isn't going to set you back too much it's mainly the hardware that's the uh, that's the expensive part so what you could do is kind of have almost like this two sets of uh, of webbing and also come to think of it if you're going if you're diving from cold water to warm water then chances are that your cold water harness might be a bit big for you in warmer waters so that's something worth considering but unthreading it it's it's not that daunting i, I wouldn't worry too much and don't worry about disassembling it completely because I can usually break down one side. It's, it's typically the, um, the right hand side. And then once you get to that middle section at the back of the spine, you're kind of done because you can unthread it. But yeah, whenever you're unthreading your, uh, your webbing, I'll, I'll get a piece of chalk and I'll mark like across there just so that when I'm putting it back, I know that A, which side that webbing like threads in and also where that like waist section is. But also when you're, when you're undoing sections, <clears throat> this is what I mean by webbing has memory. You'll, you'll see that section and it's really obvious that a D-ring goes there. So it's, you start at the center point and then work your way down the shoulder straps and then to the waistbands. And every time you meet one of these ridges, you know, okay, that either threads through part of the back plate or a D-ring goes there. Otherwise, it's all about getting the right side of the webbing and d-rings i mean you said that you've swapped over some hardware so i think you've already figured this um, this part out but i mean that one again I, you can already see that little bump of where it used to go so you want to th thread the uh, the tri slider uh downwards first because these go on like mostly on the inside and then you get your D-ring. Remember that pre-bent D-rings, they bend away from the webbing harness when they're pointing downwards. And then you just loop that and that kind of 
has it in the right position. So all you have to do is just bend that through. Sometimes you'll get it like backwards or you, you thread the other uh, tri-glider on upside down if that makes sense. But just trial and error, uh, you'll do fine. Um, and yeah, yeah, to save yourself a lot of issues um, before you continue, <clears throat> just start at the um, start at the back of the spine. Uh, I tend to put these um, uh, coach bolts in the center just to stop it from sliding side to side. Uh, do the shoulders first and then work your way down. So, okay, I've got this shoulder padding that goes on first and then Okay, I've got another tri-glider with the retainer for my inflator hose, then continue downwards. I've got D-ring underneath that, fit that. Then I've got the, uh, the little bungee retainer for my torch. Is there anything else that goes on that shoulder strap? No, right, now continue, because I've done it where I've continued all the way and I've done the, um, uh, the quick release buckle on the front and then realize that I've forgotten that little bungee retainer, in which case you have to undo some bits and bobs, um, but it's it's all good practice. But yeah, my, my main tip is really to um, just use chalk, just to remember which way it goes in. It's usually the hip section, trying to remember whether the webbing goes in that way or that way or even that way. Uh, whereas if you've got a piece of chalk, you know which way it's facing. Um, otherwise, yeah, no, no huge issues other than going from cold water to warm water because you've got the, the extra space for your either thicker wetsuit or your dry suit. That's your webbing is designed for. So you might need to pull the, uh, the shoulder strap in just a little bit more. Uh, you will have a bit of excess around your waist, but hey, it's not the end of the world. Um, otherwise, yeah, two inch webbing is really cheap. Um, so you could have a dedicated warm water webbing, make it a different color if you want to. And um, you can use the same hardware if you really want to. And, um, and that way you don't have to have it completely threaded, but at least it's off to one side so that you can swap it over when you need to. So yeah, re-threading um, like harnesses, it's it's not overly complicated. Uh, once you get stuck in, it's just methodical and, uh, and take it nice and easy. Try and keep all of the hardware safe in one spot so you don't lose anything because all it takes is for like one D-ring to go missing and you're kind of screwed. Um, yeah, otherwise it's just staying nice and methodical and, uh, and making sure that it's, it's all in the right space. But luckily that like memory of the two inch webbing is gonna help you out with that. Uh, any other scuba diving questions, by all means pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use that Ask Mark hashtag and that filters it to one side so that I can find it. I'll still reply in text so that you can get an answer as soon as possible, but then a video will follow on probably about two maybe three weeks because there's a bit of a backlog now on videos i've got plenty of them uh so yeah i'm going to go through them as quickly as possible otherwise yeah like share subscribe do all that good social media stuff if you could please that would be wonderful uh yeah check out our website scubadivermag.com uh, that's our website where you can check out our magazine otherwise there's a free uh, like sample if you visit app.scubadivermag.com uh yeah that's it for uh, for another day Thank you for listening, everybody, and of course, safe diving.